I would like to speak to you concerning breaking the cycle of bondage. In Ephesians chapter 4 verse 27 it says, nor give place to the devil. I'm going to use two portions of scripture, Judges chapter 10 verses 15 and 16. Let's read that. Then the children of Israel said to the Lord, we have sinned, do to us what seems good to you or what seems best to you. Only deliver us this day we pray. So they put away the foreign gods from among them and served the Lord and his soul could no longer endure the misery of Israel. As Christians, the Bible tells us a lot about the spiritual world and in describing the spiritual world, the Bible tells us that there is the world of light and there's the world of darkness. There's the world of good and then there's the world of evil. These are not just terms but these are realities of an invisible realm that exists simultaneously with our realm. It explains the origin, it explains the evil that is happening in this world because there are spiritual forces that are at play. As Christians we're also told that we have an enemy and this enemy is the devil, Lucifer, um, different names are given to him he's heading an army he has an army under his reign and this army they're made of demons evil spirits Hollywood has done a, a big job exposing or creating different films or possession but also really making things that are not really real in movies and movies are made to make you uh, laugh cry or be scared if they don't move you emotionally they don't make money so everything that is made about spiritual world from Hollywood has its agenda and that's that agenda is to keep your attention and not everything is true that you see in movies but there is a reality of spiritual world and there is such a thing as demons uh, these demons they're not just a word that we throw out for somebody or somebody's action that we don't like or uh, a demonic infiltration, oppression. I don't like to use the word possession because anytime you say word possession people are like oh, they right away think of the exorcism movie or, or something else and they're like yeah that's like those bad crazy people in mental institution but it could never be me. I want to use the word of oppression meaning where a demon can attack your life and has an access point to your life. There is two main ways that demons have access. Number one is the legal open door. And the number two is the sin of opportunity. If you're taking notes, uh, just, you can draw this down. A legal right is the technicality by which demons get admission to you. It's usually rooted in occult practice. It must be repented of and renounced and then the demon that came in through that legal loophole is cast out. The second big way and that is the sin of opportunity. The sin of opportunity is an opportunity of sin that is done in careless deliberate act over time and gives the devil an opportunity to get access to you. Not all fleshly sins lead to demonization but there is a risk if it's not dealt with right away. Opportunities, these sin opportunities are broken gradually by correcting behavior and progressively surrendering to Jesus. That's why the Bible tells us don't give place to the devil and what that really means is this, don't give the devil an opportunity where he might not have a legal right. So the legal right that demons, these spiritual entities that the Bible talks about and Jesus dealt with in his ministry, these entities they get legal right like a loophole in the spiritual world to come and attack you through your involvement or the involvement of your ancestors in the occult or witchcraft. The sins of opportunity are pretty much the legal right, the, the, the loophole that the devil gets when we begin to deliberately, carelessly, continuously involve ourselves in the behavior that the scripture condemns. Lying, cheating, jealousy, you know, viewing pornography, smoking, drinking, things that 
they're obvious. Their conscience tells us, hey, this is wrong for you. And we all stumble. We all fall. The Bible says righteous men fall seven times and gets up. So when you're righteous, it doesn't mean you don't, you don't stumble. You just don't stay there. And the danger is not that, you know, make sure you don't sin. That's our desire. But we all trip. But when you stay there and you carelessly continue in that state, you expose yourself to a risk of possible demonization. Again, risk possible, meaning it doesn't happen all the time. Some people can do that, repent, you know, clean up their life, continue to serve God, no demon problem whatsoever. Other people can continue in that and then they can expose themselves to a spirit of anger, to a spirit of hate, to a spirit of murder or other things. And you are like, how is that possible? I'll give you two stories. These are not demon stories. These are living practical stories, but it will give you like a picture of what that would look like. One happened to me in the Ukraine. I was struggling with math. Math, is, math and science is not necessarily my strongest um, uh, abilities. And I had a teacher who was helping me with math and she was also a doctor. And sh she was my teacher. She was not a teacher, but she was my teacher and she was a doctor. She had a German shepherd and she had a demon-possessed German shepherd. This German shepherd like hated everybody and this German shepherd was on the leash. This was the meanest dog I've ever seen in my life. I was scared of that dog but you know after a while I started to recognize and understand that this dog was on the leash which made him dangerous if I would step on his territory and he's not dangerous if I am outside of his territory. I figured out very quickly how far his leash goes because you know you can see the marks and so and then with time I developed confidence to provoke this beast knowing he can only bark at me, he can't bite me because he is on the leash. See that's how demons are. All the demons are on the leash. They can only bark at you. They can tempt you but they can't torment you as long as you're not on their territory. Their territory is the kingdom of darkness. It's the occult and the witchcraft. Now this is not God saying hey he's dissing on all other religions that don't agree with him. This is actually the kingdom of darkness. The devil lies to people by bringing them in and people out of their hunger because they were created to connect with spiritual realm there is an ache inside of every human being to desire to know is there more to life we desire to connect with another being with bigger than us and so the devil sees that he capitalizes on our hunger to know the spiritual world and he presents things in this wrapping form of like hey I can help you know your future all you got to do is call 900 you know a psychic all you got to do you want to talk to your mom who passed away you forgot to tell her that you were sorry and no big deal I can help here's a person who can actually cross over and talk to your grandma or your mom but in reality you're not speaking to your grandma or your mom you're actually contacting a demon because your grandma's gone she's gone and the Bible says once you die, you die. She's not talking to you anymore. And so who you're talking to, you're talking to demons. So how will they know all the information? You have to understand one thing about demons. They were here when your grandma was here. They got all that information. And so then you begin to cry like, oh my gosh, she understands me. But next thing that happens is you're actually stepping on the enemy's territory. The Bible was very clear from the beginning that God is saying that I am the source of good and I want you to reach out to me through my means. Meaning through my son Jesus Christ through the scripture. And this, this does seem narrow-minded a little, little bit. You're like man there's a God and he's like so narrow-minded. It's not narrow-minded. It's actually very kind. Um, Everett had a wedding yesterday. Okay. There was one way to get to his wedding one way it was through Benton City and there was this one highway there was only one way to there was, there was a fork and I got stuck at the fork because my direction was telling me to go left but my common sense kind of told me that I think it's this way so I stood right at the fork in the middle of the road I screenshot the fork and I sent to Everett and I said Everett left or right 
Now I could follow my gut or I could follow directions but I just wanted to know the guy who was actually there how to get there. Now let's say Everett said left. I said oh, narrow minded. There's many ways to get to your place. Now you can believe whatever you want but you're not going to get to where he's at and so thankfully you know I had enough common sense to take what he said and I got to the place where he was so when God is telling you that's how you get to me God is not being narrow-minded he just wants to save you time from taking wrong directions all right so when you take the right and God says to take the left you know you're not disproving anything except the fact that God is right because you will get lost you will get somewhere but it's not going to be where God is it's going to be where lies and deceptions are at. It's where darkness is at. And so, so what happened with me is that what happens with people is when we dabble into the occult or witchcraft, we step on the enemy's territory. So I've learned this dog really well. And I would come to my uh, medical uh, doctor slash my personal tutor and teacher uh, to do homework. And so one time I came with my math and I did not see the German Shepherd. His, he had a little house like the one that he lived in but I didn't see him and so I always was curious what it would feel like to step on the territory where he runs around and you know a kid I'm like you know 11 or 12 years of age my curiosities were big and so then I always was curious how his inside of his house was like so I always wanted to stick my head inside of where he dwelled so this was my perfect opportunity so I got my math and uh, I didn't even put my math books down I just you know I see he's not there and a uh, pretty big house that he was in so I step in you know checking everything and um, then I get on my knees right before the house and and uh, and I stick my head inside and uh, then came this shocking reality that something just woke up now this something was not inside of this house this something this demon possessed German Shepherd was on the back lying actually he was sleeping somehow he didn't wake up when I walked in because dogs are very sensitive and so he didn't wake up I don't know if it was the Lord or something or maybe the Lord caused this so I can have an illustration for my sermon 20 years later so as I stick my head I hear awake and I hear like somebody's hitting that little house my head is inside of the house I am on my knees by the time I get, get out I am facing the German Shepherd right in front of me and I am backed up to his little house. Now I can't go inside because the hole is too small for me to climb in plus he'll eat me for lunch and then of course I do what every teenager you know does. I scream. You know I scream I yell and so the dog went for my leg he, he took a huge bit and he wouldn't let it go. He I still have the scars to prove it I won't show you the scars. He goes for my leg and he just just holds on to keeps keeps going in thankfully his owner the teacher the doctor heard the cry and she came in she pulled him out of me and then I started to faint so she stitched me up and put a band-aid and helped me with my homework <laughs> what was my lesson lesson is very simple if you step on the territory of a dog who is violent who is on the leash you will get bit not just barked at when you step on the territory of witchcraft and a cold this is again please hear me this is not God saying hey I, it's just my religion if you go to other religions I'm gonna be so angry and I'm gonna make these things bad for you this is God warning us and saying hey if you step on the other territory there will be consequences and the consequences are you will expose yourself to a demonic oppression but thankfully with God even if you step in out of your ignorance curiosity stupidity whatever the reason is all you got to do is help and God will be there and not only he will be there but he will help to stitch your life back up that's the amazing part about God he is good he is faithful that's the amazing part about Jesus you know the doctor didn't just stand there and say ha, I told you you know that's what probably she should have done I told you not to go in you knew it better no she rescued me and she helped me and then she dealt with my damages and she still continued to help and if you are here today and maybe you out of your own volition out of your own decision you went to the other side you started to practice things that in Christianity were 
we're not allowed to not because God is keeping the fun away it's because God is protecting us from the demonic infiltration of the kingdom of darkness which is extremely real in this world today and if you don't believe it just read the news darkness is real everywhere today it's not just a figment of Hollywood's imagination this is the reality we live in and God he wants to protect us he wants us to live holy and righteous so that we can live on his kingdom and he warns us he says that as we walk through our Christian life we will have these demonic and enemies voices barking at us tempting us but as long as we don't step on their territory the most they can do is bark they can tempt but they cannot torment because we're walking with God. Now the other part is this is the part where most of us if you have any background in Christian faith you're like yeah I get it don't do this stuff like don't try to reach God through all these alternative means but the part that it hits home for each one of us is the one in Ephesians where Paul tells us do not give place to the devil but right before that in Ephesians chapter 4 verse 27 Paul begins to go through all of these things that I'm going to go ahead and actually read uh, chapter 4 and uh, verse 25 he says this therefore putting away let each one of you speak truth with his neighbor for we are members of one another be angry and do not sin do not let the sun go down on your wrath nor give place to the devil and then he begins to go through different stuff he's like let him who stole steal no longer but let him work not unemployment actually working if you if you can work let him labor working with his hands what is good that he may have something to give him who has a need so you don't wait for a billionaire to throw you a little money and to make all the wealth be spread equally God the Bible teaches everybody got to work unless you're disabled you're elderly or unless you're um, you know in a physical situation that you can't Bible says work and don't steal and then he continues to say let no corrupt word proceeds from your mouth but what is good and necessary for edification that it may impart grace to, to the hearers and do not grieve the Holy Spirit by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption let all bitterness wrath anger clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice and be kind to one another tender-hearted forgiving one another even as Christ has forgiven you have you noticed that none of the actions that this apostle Paul tells us to stay away from are demonic in nature wrath anger malice <clears throat> backbiting gossiping you know fighting maybe all of these things they're not witchcraft but it's something that many of us will tolerate and he tells us two things about this he says one it grieves the Holy Spirit who lives inside of us and number two it opens a door to a demon because Paul tells us do not give place that's a real estate word do not give a property do not give a parcel do not give a place to the devil there is no reference here concerning you know you talking to a psychic reading zodiac signs or you know playing Ouija boards or consulting the dead or like going into spiritism or all of this stuff then here is everything about the things that we kind of let sometimes in our life and we struggle with and the danger of staying in these sins or in these behaviors now we're capable of making them but the danger of carelessly deliberately continuously allowing that to run in our life is this this Holy Spirit who lives in us is grieved and secondly the enemy has an opportunity we are at risk of having an open door to the enemy and then this enemy can come in a few months ago I had a situation in my house where my house went through deliverance but before my house went through deliverance we found a big problem the problem is we found a little creature called mice my wife did she was in my office and it turns out that mice was just like running up and down on my bookshelves now I didn't see the mice I trusted my wife's report so she came screamed closed the door and uh, we put little towels to cover that you know so that it doesn't get out we're gonna trap this little thing you know and let me just pause for a second for those people who are Christians and maybe your first time at Hungry Gen and you don't believe that Christians can have demons 
I didn't believe that owners could have mice. I thought if your house is good with the city and you pay taxes, you can't have mice. You can have whatever you want to have. Secondly, if you open the doors or you have cracks, mice can come. Same thing as a Christian. You can be filled with the Holy Ghost. You can be tongue speaking. You even have a fish bumper sticker. And so go into Hungry Jen. But if you continuously to do these things, wrath, malice, and anger, you can actually expose yourself to a demon. I'm not saying you're demon possessed and you're completely out of your mind, but you can have this little rotten thing running around in your life and controlling particular areas of your personality at particular weak points. So my wife tells me that, you know, we have a mice in the house. And so um, me being the great man of God I am and full of courage and power and boldness, I said, I'm not going to catch that thing. I don't want to see that thing. I said, we're going to, to the store. And so we went to the store. I found the mouse trap. I wanted to have that mouse trap where the mice goes in and then there's a spring that's, that um, springs, springs forth and it, get, it traps that mouse completely. So I, didn't, I don't even have to see the mouse. I just take that whole procedure and just throw it away. And so we put it into four different places in the house. I'm like, just in case this mouse has multiplied. So we put it in the laundry, in the office, in the garage, downstairs, everywhere, just to be extra sure. And so we went about our merry way. We came back and then... <laughs> I realized how a coward, coward I am. I was so afraid to go into the laundry room to just check if the mouse trap caught the mouse. Like I was <laughs> in my own house, scared of, this is not a lion, this is not a cheetah, this is not a hyena, this is not, this is a mouse who's afraid of me. And it dawned on me that that's how many people feel about demons. They're afraid of them when demons actually are afraid of you. Even the ones that are tormenting you are afraid of you. Yeah. I'm not saying to be careless with demons. I'm not saying this is not a game. It's not a joke. We don't play a little cat and mouse uh, situation. But we are simply fearless as Christians to face the enemy. We don't presume upon ourselves and our strength and courage. We rely on the strength Jesus has given to us by the virtue of his name. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, therefore we are fearless. We are not afraid of demons. Like one preacher one time was uh, sleeping and I think it was Smith Wigglesworth and cold. He woke up in just a cold sweat. The room was freezing cold and he turned around and according to him, the devil was there standing. And he, and he turned back on and he said, oh, that was you. I thought it was something more serious and went back to sleep. Or one time uh, I heard an another a minister was sleeping and woke up because the devil started moving furniture in this house. And so he got up. He didn't even get out of his bed. He just sat up. And he says, put it back where you found it. And, and then when he put him back, he's like, now get out. He's like, I need to get my sleep. You know, and, and at first it may seem like, oh, that's, that's cockiness. No, that is a courage founded in Jesus. You're not to be afraid. Amen. Again, I was afraid. And then we finally caught the thing. And then my wife is like, hey, could you open that? Could you open the mouse trap? And just to see if the mouse was really caught. I was like, no. I trust the system. I'm like, I'll throw all the mouse traps just to be sure. Because this one, you know, like it snapped, so it's closed in now. And I was like, I just believe that it's there. And according to my belief, it, it's done for me. I threw that away. And thankfully, we've never seen a mouse again. After that, we decided to look at any opening that we have in our house. Is there any cracks that we have? Is there anything in the garage? Um, any kind of seals that are open? Because it could happen again. And that's how many Christians can have demons. Is that either they have opened their life to legally to a witchcraft or they carelessly, deliberately, continuously, without repentance, have allowed these sins to operate in their life. And today they're no longer sins that they just repent of. They repent of it and they keep on doing it and keep on doing it. And you may say, how do I know if I have a demon? If there's something else, that controls a part of your emotion that you say like this after you did that thing I don't know what I was doing I don't know what was happening it wasn't me you're actually true you're actually accurate sometimes people say those things to shift blame 
but we have to as spiritual people hear this when a person says I was out of control who was in control then now if it happened once I get it we all have those moments but if this has been happening every other day for the last five years there's someone else in control so when we're doing deliverance when we're praying for deliverance our goal is to give you back the control you lost that's why the fruit of the spirit is self-control holy spirit doesn't control you he gives you control and when you continuously carelessly deliberately sin not only we grieve the spirit but we also can be at risk of giving that control over our emotion or over our mind to the enemy and it doesn't mean that you're always out of control you're doing a good thing working your job loving your family but then there's those moments those weak moments where something just comes on something just and like your eyes change your family recognizes that's that's not the same person that we've been living with what happens it's a mice or maybe like a little cougar <laughs> that needs to be bound and it needs to be removed now the scripture that I've read and I'm just gonna uh, mention this in passing and we're going to pray and the scripture in Judges chapter 10 it said the following that we have sinned do what it seems good to you and they started to put away evil gods God could no longer see that misery and he came to deliver them there's a few practical things that we all should do and I'm gonna go through them very quickly number one is that we repent genuinely and repentance is more than saying I'm sorry repentance is more than feeling guilty repentance is you changing your mind and you changing your direction number two is that we have to surrender surrender wholeheartedly we have to surrender to God after we repent you don't just wait for God to fix you before you surrender to him number three is we see in here that we have to ask for deliverance the Bible says that we have sinned deliver us and I love the fact they said deliver us now not tomorrow not a little bit later not until I prove my point with my spouse but now I find a story in book of Exodus very funny actually when Pharaoh because of his rebellion brought a lot of frogs on his territory and then you know he comes to Moses says Moses could you pray to your God so that God can remove the frogs and Moses says I will give you the honor of letting you decide when pretty cool actually when God lets you decide when you would think Pharaoh would have some brains and say as, as, ASAP you know what Pharaoh, Pharaoh asked for tomorrow I'm like you have frogs in your bedroom and God is giving you a chance to choose the time of your deliverance and you're like yeah one more night with the frogs wouldn't hurt probably so don't spend one more night with the frogs don't spend one more night with depression don't spend one more night with anxiety don't spend one more night with hate with anger don't spend one more night with suicidal thoughts you have to ask God say Lord I want you to deliver me today I want you to set me free today today is the day of salvation today is the time to say I'm sorry today is the time to say thank you today is the time to clean up our life today is the time to get right with God and today is the time to say God deliver me today come on today is the time to throw away those cigarettes if God wanted you to smoke he would put a chimney on the top of your head he didn't so he doesn't want you today is the day to stop those things that you're like you know what they're just not right for me today is the day not tomorrow not next week not when you're gonna feel a little ooh. no none of that stuff today is the day uh, not only they prayed for deliverance but they also took out the garbage meaning they put away the foreign gods God wants us to put away things that are not pleasing to him sometimes it's physical objects sometimes it's things actually they're not like sinful but for you they're just distracting another thing that God wants us to do is to start to serve him and when we begin to take these steps we, rep we repent we surrender we pray we take out the garbage we remove things that are not good and we commit to serve God something happens the Bible says in here and God could no longer God's soul could no longer endure the misery of Israel now at first it seems like God was just super super mad but in the original language it actually means that God was really impatient to deliver them to help them he was broken he was he was grieved with their misery I want to assure every person in this room if your desperation meets your dedication you will not miss your deliverance God will see it 
God will not dismiss your case. If your desperation meets your dedication, God will not dismiss you. He will meet you at the point of your need. And the last thing I want to highlight is that they did all of that. Israel did all of that. They repented. They surrendered to God. They threw away foreign idols. They committed to serve God. But honestly, nothing happened. The relationship with God was restored. They didn't get free. Until in chapter 11 of book of Judges, they went and reached out to a guy named Jephthah. And this guy was previously the one that they drove out because he was a son of a prostitute. And for them, it was kind of embarrassing. So they pretty much drove this guy out. And when they couldn't get free, they reached out to him and they said, could you come back and lead us into a battle? And of course, he came back and God delivered Israel. I want to encourage every person that all of that preparation of repentance, all of that preparation of surrendering, getting back to church, all of that preparation of I'm going to take away those things that are bad and they're distracting. I'm going to stop going to those places. They're just bringing me down. All of that is good. I'm going to give my life to Jesus Christ. That is the most important thing and that's the best decision you can make. But if you notice, you still got issues. I want to encourage you to find your Jethro. Now for some of us, it's pretty basic. Find somebody who can pray with you. Find a deliverance minister. Those of you guys are coming here, you're coming to Hungry Gen and Hungry Gen, some of you have seen our church or have actually said this about our church. It's the weird church and today you came to the weird church because God can use Jethro to bring you deliverance. In fact, it was Jethro God used to bring deliverance to those people. Sometimes that person is a medical doctor. Mm -hmm. Where you come, you receive deliverance, you receive prayer, everything is good but you're noticing like there's still certain things where you, you need medical help or a counselor. Now again, for those of you who think that deliverance is where everything is solved, you would look at the medical doctor or a counselor as a Jethro. Yeah, no, they're not spiritual enough. And then there's those of you who only clean or just, oh, I just need more counseling, more counseling. Yeah, but you've been going to counseling for 15 years. You're still mad. You have a therapist, but you're still angry. Maybe you need deliverance. I'm not saying the therapist is not the solution, but maybe deliverance is something that you look at as Jethro, like, ah, yeah, that's just weird, like screaming, yelling, like, and then the manifesting, like foam coming out, like, yeah, like not for me. I'm a, I'm a good person. That's just for those weirdos. That's just not for me. But you keep hitting the same wall. And until you humble yourself and sometimes embrace the very thing you made fun of, the very thing you drove out in your mind and says that never for me and then you humble yourself before God God can give you that breakthrough that you desperately need God will not just use us on our knees and saying please deliver me like I was talking to a young man uh, during the week and he said when he went through financial peace university classes he's like now I'm completely he's like I've, I've never been out of debt always in debt cars always on the payment credit cards always maxed out he says I went through that class I'm a spiritual man and he says but after that he says now I'm completely out of debt and I'm five years out and I'm going to pay off my house and I'm looking at him you know and people can look at the financial classes at the church and say no I just need to tithe more and I just need to pray louder but the classes no that that's for just the, that's for the people who just don't know how to manage money well your bank records prove that you probably need help that could be a Jethro we had a family that came for prayer line not long ago and they were convinced they drove for a very long time very long time whole family came it was a big deal we prepared for this as our team started to minister to the daughter and they led her through the prayers of renouncing and all of that stuff that we do and then afterwards you know there was no manifest like demonic manifestation and then our team recommended based on what they've seen with this girl she needs to get medical help you know and it's not easy to hear for a parent who got the whole family drove half a day or a full day to here to receive prayer no shaking baking on the floor no stuff like they see on the videos and now they're told by this dynamic team they just need to go back home and go to the doctor I mean nobody wants to hear that but they were humble enough to say you know what thank you for taking time to minister to us 
we will follow on your advice. As they went to the doctor, they examined her brain and they found out she had a live uh, parasite in her brain. And so thankfully they start putting her on uh, surgery and, and other work and so, and now that will eliminate the problem. It would have been easy to treat everything as a nail if deliverance is the hammer. But at Hungry Gen, we understand that deliverance is a component of your freedom. There's other components that God will use. And all of us are usually biased. We have this weird view of the Jethro's in our lives. For some people, you're just so deliverance hungry, deliverance, 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 you just don't want to see the doctor. There's others, you will see the doctor, you will go little, you will switch 20 doctors, but you will never come for prayer because you think everything is physical, nothing is spiritual. And sometimes it's both. What I'm just saying is that if you're noticing you keep hitting the wall, be open to the possibility that your total breakthrough might lie in the sphere you're currently labeled as weird. And God might pull the Jethro to bring total freedom into your life. Regardless which way, our God is a good God. He's in a good mood and He loves us and He wants to set us free. He can deliver us. A woman came to me today in the first service and I did a teaching on soul ties um, this Thursday and she's a member of our church, faithful uh, serving in our church and she said, I just want to tell you, she's like, when I watched that stream uh, of Thursday, she's like, I came to the parking lot in the church on Saturday. She says, as I sat in the car, he says, deliverance started to happen to me in the parking lot. He says, as I renounced those things that you renounced on YouTube, and she's literally an older lady and she says, I am totally free right now from those soul ties and the demons that are attached to me. God used the YouTube video. God can use anything to accomplish His purpose. I just want to let you know, God is in charge and God is in control. We're going to be praying for people in just a moment. But understand, whoever is going to be laying hands on you, for those of you who are here, please do not discriminate. And don't come in and don't be extra. Like some people are so picky and they're so desperate and desperation is good but if there is no preparation education and determination your desperation is flaky that's why it's important to be educated on what's happening watch some videos read some books read the scriptures and also be prepared remove the stuff that is not right prepare your heart and then honestly when you come in be determined i'm here to be set free i'm not here for vlad to hit me with his hand or spit on me but i don't spit but it sometimes just comes out and so but i'm here for god to touch me and if it's going to be one of the younger ministers or the new minister that i haven't seen it doesn't matter it's the god i look for help from and god's going to set me free there's a freedom at this altar. Amen. Hey, thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed this content and this was a blessing to you, would you help us and hit thumbs up so that it could help more people to discover this video. It costs you nothing, but it can go a long way to help with the algorithm. As well as if you're not subscribed to our channel, hit subscribe, click on the bell so that you can be reminded each time that we upload videos. Thank you so much for being a part of this community. If you're interested in learning more about Hungry Gen, our internship, our conferences, deliverance, and so many other things, go to HungryGen.com for more information. And as always, remember, better is not good enough, the best is yet to come.